Come, Holy Spirit, and be present with us in this place, for you are with us, and nothing else matters. I ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I've gone a little high-tech. You can't forget pages this way. I bet you can forget to charge your batteries, so we'll see how it works. But I have a movie clip that I'd like you to see to start us off today. I think it's the clean version, right, Jen? Clean. <laughs> it's on the way. Looks like I missed something. Oh. Yeah, you did. We're all officially kicked out of school. Wormer just got our grades. They kicked us out of school? <laughs> that makes sense. Hey! <laughs> what, just lying around us? What the hell is supposed to do, you moron? War's over, man. Wormer dropped a big one. What? Over? Did you say over? Nothing is over until we decide it is! Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Forget it, he's rolling. It ain't over now. Cause when the going gets tough. A tough get going. Who's with me? Let's go. Come on. The Delta I used to know. Where's the spirit? Where's the guts? Huh? This could be the greatest night of our lives. But you're gonna let it be the worst. Oh, we're afraid to go with you, Bruno. We might get in trouble. Well, just kiss me from now on! Not me! I'm not gonna take this! Mother, he's a dead! So that has absolutely nothing to do with the sermon today. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. It really does. It's just going to take me a while to get there, guys. Today we are in Mark's Gospel. And St. Mark has Jesus, in his very first act of ministry, call out a man's unclean spirit. You know, we struggle with how to process the concept of demonic possession and exorcisms. Yet, interest in the demonic, both inside and outside the Christian church, has increased almost exponentially. Hollywood, mindful of our pre primordial I lost my place, so this is a bad part about it. Hollywood, mindful of our primordial fears, know we're full of fertile ground. And they grind out one gory horror movie after another, and we eat it up. The statistics of satanic worship in the United States is disturbing. Today, the Catholic Church in the United States has 10 times as many exorcists as it did at the turn of the century. And that means just this last one, 2000, okay? And they do that just to keep up with demand. And the problem is, isn't that the devil has upped his game or anything. The problem is, we're just more willing to play it. When Satan shows up, it's almost always by invitation. As Lutherans, we're quick to dismiss demonic possession and exorcism as just fiction. But I have to tell you, this week I was reading about exorcism and I came across a movie that was supposed to be true. It's called The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Now, it's based on a true story of a young adult woman in Germany, um, and those who were closest to her 
um, believed that she was possessed. So they, they, her parents and others called in the parish priest to do an exorcism. The parish priest had a friend of his, a psychiatrist, he was an expert in psychosis, to come along just to rule out any mental illness. The priest performs the exorcism, which is unsuccessful, and the young woman eventually dies. The priest goes on trial, being accused of her murder. Now, I don't know how many creative liberties Hollywood took and stretched the truth a little, but throughout the trial, the priest, the priest lawyer, and the key witness, the psychiatrist, are frequently haunted by demons. And it almost always happens at 3 o'clock. Satan, the priest, when he is on the witness stand, says Satan shows up at 3 o'clock as an aversion to the Holy Trinity. So Jeff and I have a projection clock that projects the time on the ceiling right above our bed. You know, it's hard when you get older to turn your head and look at the clock. But anyway, guess who wake up, woke up this morning to a big red 3 a.m.? And guess who's been up since 3 a.m. analyzing it? I am not kidding. Was Satan lurking? Was God saying you should take this more seriously? Or was it just I woke up at 3 a.m.? I don't really have an answer, but it certainly got my attention. Exorcism, calling out demons, it's just usually not part of our vocabulary. We rarely talk about it. But predictably, Martin Luther did. You know, historically, the single most contested issue with Lutheran baptism isn't whether we should sprinkle or immerse, but whether or not the baptized should be ritually exercised. Luther considered exorcism an essential part of the baptismal liturgy. We struggle naming a demon a demon, but Jesus does not. It's the Sabbath. Jesus is preaching, and right in the middle of the sermon, we hear a wicked, unruly, chilling voice yelling from the back row, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Where are the ushers? <laughs> Who let this guy in? And he sounds down the preacher, Have you come to destroy us? Us? We look around. Okay, I think I only see one. What's the yes about? What is Jesus up against here? Multiple personality disorder? Schizophrenia? A legion of Philadelphia Eagles fans? <laughs> Jesus comes down from the pulpit with quiet authority and says, shut up, get out of him. And the unclean spirit cries loudly and runs away. Oh, if it were just that easy. And oh, if Jesus just showed up every time we had to fight demons. We're skeptics about demonic possession and exorcism, yet we know evil is always near. Hundreds and hundreds of insidious, unclean spirits tormenting our community, our church, our homes, and our hearts. Vulgar forces sucking the life out of us. Power, envy, greed, anger, addiction, and more. 
And like the guys at the Delta fraternity, we are defeated, powerless to do anything about it. We've been beat down so much, we think we'll just stay there, crawl under the bed. Although that's where demons are, so I don't know. As much as we want to give up, we worship a God who won't let us do that. And Mabel Grove Lutheran Church knows that too well. Over the last several years, you mainly, but we, have endured some to our share of turbulence, I would say, and we grieve, sometimes grieve the way the loss, the loss of the way it used to be. The demons of anger and hurt feelings and blame still linger. Yet they leave us paralyzed, stuck in an abyss of what used to be and what it will be. Jesus stands steadfast against all those forces, keeping us stuck in our own hell. Be silent. Get out of here. Jesus is prepared to do battle with the unclean spirits, holding us back from God's ministry and mission, holding us back from joy and meaning and purpose. Today, just like every day, Jesus invites us into the hope and the promise of resurrected life. So let's take him up on it. And let's not do it half donkeyed. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> half donkeyed? Okay, I didn't want to say that. Okay. <laughs> Today we have our congregational meeting and we're going to lock everybody in, holding you hostage, and as you listen to our church leadership inspire us with a vision for the year ahead, a vision of community, a community full of life and laughter and love. Resurrection is not easy. But it is possible. We have mountains and mountains of work ahead, which would make us weary if we lacked the energy and skills to do it. But God gives each of us gifts to do God's work. And God expects us to be good stewards of those gifts, using them daily to grow the kingdom of God. The leadership is grateful for your financial gifts and is going to challenge each other, each of us, to give a little bit more. And as for your other gifts, there is so much that needs to be done at this church. We need those too. And if you've forgotten, let me remind you. Lecture, painter, greeter, cook, parade walker, Sunday school teacher, singer, carpet layer, mentor, sound technician, Bible study leader, assisting minister, eater, acolyte, Christopher, community assistant, family moving forward host, preacher, organizer, counter, dancer, mission trip chaperones, trunk or treat demons, decorator, babysitter, carpenter, IT geek, administrative assistant, craft maker, picture tanger, tape hanger, and taker, custodian, DJ, multimedia specialist, prophet, plumber, dishwasher, coffee maker, donut chauffeur, chauffeur, usher, home communion visitor, toilet cleaner, light bulb changer, dirt digger, shovel, snow shoveler, lawnmower, seed planter, weed cooler, meal packer, work, word worker, artist, altar guild, mechanic, repair person, garage sale guru, small group leader, video guide, and your most feared evangelist. <laughs> oh, and we need exorcists too, so if you know anything about that. We have more gifts than we can name, but we have more work than we can handle. We need everyone's gift. 
Jesus is standing by to destroy all the demons from using the gift God bestows upon each of us. You know, sometimes event organizers or church staff or community co committee chairs are like Pluto. He gets everybody excited. They have this wonderful thing that the church is going to do. They come up here, they give a big speech, and they rally everybody, and they run out the door cheering, saying, let's go, and nothing. What demons must we get rid of for it to be different? What demons must we get rid of to be a growing and a thriving church? What demons must we get rid of for resurrected life? Who's with me? I got some hands. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna, I'm gonna name a few things and if you agree, you're gonna say, yeah. okay? <laughs> got that? Sleeping through the sermon! <laughs> Fear! Yes. Anger! Yes. We can't do that here! Yes. Budget worries! Yes. Watching the clock during worship! Yes. Judgment! Yes. No participation! Yes. Not inviting people to church! Yes. And anything else we name before you. <laughs> We are a community of faith called by God to share life and laughter and love. Let's share it daily to the glory of God. First with each other and then with our neighbors. And I was thinking today, if we are going to do this right, we need a little practice. So everybody stand up.
Oh no, Tad just called me out on stop looking at my watch. <laughs> so, so I want to leave you with this today. It's from Isaiah. What? Oh, no, you're, you should sit down, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Gosh, you guys always need instructions on when to stand up and stand up. <laughs> It's from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Every youth, youth will faint and be weary, and the young will be will fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. And let's stand again as we sing. Two, three, four. Creator.